Well, spring is almost here and it's about that time to start doing yard work again. And with that comes mowing the lawn. This year, I'm gonna be ditching both the gas and the cords. I'm going to be trying out the Sunjo Ion 40 volt 16 inch cordless lawnmower. Stay tuned. Hi again, John Stone, the DIY smart home guy. Last year I did a video review of the Sunjo Mojo 14 inch 110 volt electric lawnmower. I liked that lawnmower a lot. It was $99 when I bought it on Amazon and it was really a great value. At the time I did this video, you could still find that lawnmower for sale. One of the drawbacks to that lawnmower is and because of the amperage rating on that lawnmower, it requires you to have a fairly hefty extension cord. So I got kind of tired last year of dragging around the big heavy extension cord and I decided to go for something different. So this year I'm going after the Sunjo Ion 40 volt 16 inch cordless lawnmower. There's a lot of battery operated lawnmowers out there on the market. I chose the Sunjo Ion because I really like the Sunjo Mojo. It was a great experience. It, again, it's not for larger lawns, but I don't have a big lawn anyway, so I didn't really care. I also wanted to get away from the gas and the oil and everything that that brings with it. So going to a battery operated lawnmower was pretty good for me. I also waited to the end of the year last year and I picked this thing up on Amazon.com, so I got a pretty good price on it. So I really didn't have much to lose. Now the thing I should say is, once you buy uh, like something like a Sunjo Mojo, which does require the cord, if you don't already have a heavy duty extension cord, those things can run you 30, 40, 50 bucks. So with the $99 for the lawnmower and maybe the $50 for the extension cord, you're sunk into a corded lawnmower for about $150. That's if you go with the cheap route, which is the Sunjo Mojo. Now, when you factor in the cost of the extension cord and then the wear and tear and all that that brings with it, going with the battery operated lawnmower really makes sense. So that's why I went this route. And according to Sun Joe, this thing is rated for small to mid-sized lawns. And you're gonna get about 40 minutes of battery life out of there. Grass catcher is 9.25 gallons. And the blade speed is turning at 3,500 RPM. Now, even though this says that it's a 16 inch mower, your actual blade size is only going to be 15 inches. Uh, the other thing I want to point out is it is going to take about two and a half or three hours to get a full charge on that battery. That's when it's fully depleted. However, uh, your battery's probably going to come with a little bit of a charge on it, but I would get that battery plugged in first before you start doing anything in terms of trying to mow your lawn. The battery charger is pretty straightforward. You get the single green light when it's plugged in and ready to charge. Once you plug the unit in, then you're going to get the red light here, and that's the indication that it's charging. Once you're fully charged, you'll get the two green lights. Uh, if there's a problem with the battery, you'll get that single red light. So while that's charging, let's go get the mower put together. So there's not really a lot of assembly that's going to be required. Mostly it's going to center around just getting that handle on. When you pull it out of the box, it does have this really nice handle. This thing is very well balanced on the handle, so that's actually a pretty nice feature. Pull that handle out. You are going to have the cord there, so be careful of that. And then the other handle goes to slide right off. So before we get this too far put together, let's take a look at the underside of this. So the first thing that stands out to me is even though this is an all plastic construction, when you compare this to that Sunjo Mojo, the areas where the axles go through for the wheels is reinforced. It's a nice big reinforced section there and built right onto that axle are these washers that are welded on. It also has these two screws here, which it appears that you can actually take this out and replace it if you do have a problem. Um, I don't know what kind of problem you'd have. I would suspect that the plastic would wear away before anything else does. But this is uh, quite a bit more beefy than the Sunjo Mojo, the little brother of this thing. So I like the construction of this a lot better. Uh, the blade is pretty standard blade. Uh, what I do like about this is it's actually a very big area for that grass to get sucked back into the bag catcher. So all in all pretty cool. Again, on the rear axle, it's got the nice reinforcement. So even though this is plastic, um, I think as long as you're not just going crazy with it, you're not really gonna do any damage with it.
So getting the grass catcher on this thing is pretty easy. You've got these notches right here, and those just fit right here. Just a matter of lifting this up and dropping it on and putting it down. The other nice thing is as you're running, the air from the mower is going to be pushing this up. Once this gets clogged and prevents the airflow, that's going to go down. So it's a nice little indication that your bag is full. So kind of like that as well. So to get the battery in, there's just this little release lever for the battery cover. You're just going to push that down and open that up. And battery just drops right down in there. You'll hear a click and that battery's in there. To get the battery back out, just pull on that, slides it right out. Pretty simple. Get that click in there. The other thing is there's this little key here and you have to make sure that you have that key down in there. Other than some sort of a safety precaution, I have no idea what that key's for. Close that down and we should be ready to run. Okay, so when you're ready to fire this up, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna push and hold the start button here. Then you're gonna pull back on this lever, give it about one or two seconds. And there you go. And it's as simple as that. Let's go give this a test run on the front lawn and we'll see how it performs. So it did make pretty short work of the lawn. The one thing I really enjoyed was this unit is really light. You can tell that it's lighter than most of the models you'd ever use, and that made it really nice and easy when I was mowing the lawn. The wheels did feel a little flimsy to me, but I, that's probably just the construction. I don't think it was really going to fall apart on me, but my area is small. I'm not sure that I would use this on larger lawns, big areas, but you could give it a shot. One thing I did notice that I don't really like about the mower is the distance between the front and back here. If you're in a really tight area where you have to butt up against something like a wall or a brick curb, this gap is going to make that quite a pain in the butt. It is kind of nice and thin over here, but not as thin as you would have on an electric or a regular gas mower. Um, so between the edge of this blade and this outer edge, you probably got three quarters of an inch. So this is not good for tight tolerances, that's for sure. But other than that, this is a really nice experience. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to click like. Over here are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy. For more reviews, tips, and DIY videos, visit azhb.com. And thanks to all of you that already follow me over on Facebook or Twitter. Both are at DIY Smart Home Guy. Until next time, cheers.